for like eight years. And at Tuto Hunt, we used to have this architecture. I mean, they do have it. So we have domain logic on both ends. We have Ruby on Rails. We had the GraphQL as a connection tissue. We only use Rails as an API layer. We used to follow React, NextJS, React Native for mobile, and we had the connection to Uh While I was in Proton, I started this thing called Angry Building, which was a tool for facility management companies able to manage their businesses and make sure everybody in the buildings is happy. Like uh, we always say that the company is to rename it to Happy Building. So this started as a side project. I started to do this like two years ago and it started like those things which is like how cartoonic kind of situation. So when I was choosing the architecture blocks for a building, I was just trying to pick stuff that I kind of knew and I needed to move that fast. I didn't I needed as most easy things I can do. So I choose Ruby on Rails because I do Ruby on Rails since 2009. So I pretty much know all the books. But, but now I didn't want to do any JavaScript except Rails UGS, even though I love JavaScript, even though the mobile app is native. Uh, it just added a layer that was nothing for my clients. I didn't want to write CSS, even though I also love it. I decided to try tell just so I can interact faster. Uh, Another thing which I wanted to focus on was uh, focus on the domain log, focus on the business, because the system it is, becomes like a small ERP system. And also for me, it's very important to have very big end-to-end -end test tools. So this was my architecture idea for Angry Building. And again, I, really, I love Ruby and Rap Rails, but there is always a but when you love Rails. <laughs> And there's this really nice folder here called helpers, which is not that helpful. Uh, there is this other folder called views, which, I mean, when you have to about it, when you connect those two, you get into like these small situations when you start looking stuff around and you kind of feel, okay, I'm opening this page and I'm trying to follow the pieces of where do they come from? How is that? And you get into situations. So fortunately, a couple of months before I started working on Angry Building, I noticed this library from the cup, which was called View Component, which is a pretty good name. Usually, like, uh, so I have a couple of gems. One gem I have is called Search Object, which what does it do? It makes a object. I have a, another gem, which is called uh, uh, mini form, what does it that form? I have something called angry support, which is something else. And I like names like that. It's very descriptive. It's like, uh, so view components is library coming from GitHub. And this is how view components looks like. They actually have a very small and very useful size. Like, even if you see it, like, this is like the smallest view component you can do. Actually, it's not the smallest, you can even make it smaller. So if you have, let's say, in your application, you have the build set where you have information about yeah, where you have the bank, the IBAN. If, if you think about it, if you want to make this component build set generic, what do you need? You need a title and you need content. And with two components, what you can do is you can say this. I'm rendering a new build set component I pass the field set and I give it a title and again I put stuff in the body. I don't care about it. And do something which in Ruby one we do very rarely, class. So we just create a class for this component. We set get it a title, gets an attribute a title, and it has here, if you see, there is that field set component, that HTML, that ERB widget. Get the class and it's like okay, I have my class, I have the title, and I have this thing content. Like remember, get title, but where does the content come from? So the the content is fast as the block. It's meant to 
stuff inside of your component. So if you remember here, this part is the content. It is this block over here. So this is coming as a helper. It's called slots. And we see one more of the things we can do with slots. So this is like a nice component, very simple, very nice. And this is one of the things, because I mean, I do a, I, I, I have a lot of other people who can do this. <laughs> and something that is great about the Ruby community is all the details of the developer experience. So other few components come with this review system which is very similar if you use Rails. The Rails, one of my favorite Rails features is the Mails previews, weirdly enough. Uh, you can create a very simple thing where just defining this class, view component preview, you can say, okay, this is uh, my vault, uh, render, prepare component, and all of that. You can create a preview that's very similar to how Rails does the mailers. So you can actually see your components and this is all the stuff you need to do in order to have a Rails mail view experience. And even more, there is this gem called Bluebook, which is built on top of the previews, which gives you this really nice UI where you can see all your components, you can review the source code, you can put params, you can feed them, you can play them. And I come from the React job world, I go there time to time, I used to organize it's about React. Setting a thing like this with React takes a week. So, and with you components, it's only like an hour. So, you just have a of reviews, you can see your components, you can play with them, it's pretty useful. And this is the achievement we are locked today. Like, basically, again, you are the active of your component. That's the whole idea. This is what Components work, this is great, and back with the opportunity. But let I think I have a couple minutes more left, more than half an hour left. So let's go more deep. Let's dive in. Because there is a lot more things we need to think about. But even though we use something that's very simple and component, we always have to think with our heads how to do stuff. So it goes and start with components like everything, they're replacing stuff. They're not replacing everything. And there is always questions about what goes to helpers, what goes to a partial, and what goes to a component. And how should I structure my system? Like a lot of people, when they start working with new components, they start doing stuff like that, which is render hero component, render primary feature the clients, render whatever, which are shows. And how many of you have been in this show tree shell where you open one partial, you see it open another one, then it opens another one, then it opens a third one, and you come back to the first one. And you're like, why the system works? And people say, oh, that's great. I can do this now. And that's not better. That's just not better. You don't need stuff to like that. So I have this rule, like checklist. And I mean, sometimes uh, the rule of the checklist is if you don't follow the checklist, you should know why. So my checklist is when do I use view component? So the first time where when I extract view component is when I consider extracting the that's used at least in two places. If you have a part that's used in two places, I would consider a oh, not sorry, two places, two controllers. Very key. You use a partial in two separate controllers. Then this goes to a view component. Uh, if I'm considering extracting a view helper that generates complicated HTML, like more than two lines, like two tags, five tags, and you have to think about safe attributes like that, move it to component. When I have very deep if-else logic, like if you have this long branching tree and you're like, oh, maybe a helper method would be here would be very useful. Or sometimes we, we get into the situation and this is where we have like 
five different libraries doing things like big and filters and all the other things which overtake a lot of patterns where we just needed this complicated if else punching logic to have a single place where you can do it. And components is a nice place to put logic. Also, if I notice that I'm copy pasting a lot of stuff around, I'm kind of like noticing, oh, maybe this should be. The other place is I don't have much JavaScript in this application. Places where I have it, I always wrap it in a component. So I know this is the only place I use JavaScript logic because you need some data, some validation there, stuff around that. So this is the time I use Gupy. But I think even more important is when do I not use Gupy? So the first time I don't use Gupy component is I have a partial that's used in a single control. And the best example is, I think most of you have done this, underscore form HTML.erp. Doesn't make sense to be a component because it's used in play. Also with the latest rev, we have these local things where we can validate what. But honestly, if you check my application, I have two partials. One is called table, underscore table. The other is called underscore table. And they're all used in the same place. Uh, that's when I do the partial. Just very simple place. Uh, when I use view helpers. So I use view helpers when I'm doing a pure function. Like for example, my, my app worked with a lot of money. Not much of uh, those money done for me. But I have a helper that's called format and it it's money. I have another helper that we're going to see later today, which is called uh, Num, which gets an enum from record and translates to the Rails translation system. It's, and this is pure function. Uh, and this is the bit point of the show. Uh, if I notice that there is a scary HTML, and, and, and here I don't, I just talk about very complicated UI design where you have like, I just leave it as it's in speech, just because I don't my career is oftentimes. I go to this direction when I try to clear, make the code more clean than it needs to be, just because it looks good. And I did over cleaning. And when I do over cleaning, the moment business logic changes, this cleaning bugs me. I, I cannot say it there. But the situation is sometimes I leave code, I notice this pattern with me, and sometimes I leave this support ugly. This code has a very simple input, a very simple output, but it's very complicated to learn. I just leave it because the next time I open the file. And if I need to change logic, then this ugliness will kind of refactor when I have a root for a factor just because it looks ugly. And again, I think about the system is we have the helpers, which are the real simple functions that do the formatting for us. We have the UAV components. The, those are like the buttons, table, uh, and the level of components. I call it the main components. So here is an example. I have a function that formats money. I have a component that displays the money. Again, shows the money, and then I have a component which is called product price component. What product price component mean? I mean, it uses money component and by some logic, it's value of product. And what does money component do? This is the money. Very simple. Fine. And again, how we find out stuff. So, this is how stuff was logic today. But again, I can talk a lot. And talking is again very cheap. So let me show you some because I want. So I the first thing I use the component is rendering this and back up they have they have to be a user, correct. But inscribe it. This is too much. I mean it doesn't feel right in the else situation 
comparing the views and it doesn't feel right to see shit. So we just have this nice uh, component helper where you just have symbol. You don't need to add component part. And it's again very simple math program. If you guys like it, use it. If you don't, don't. It's just make it a bit code a bit cleaner. This is how it looks like. And this is again where I use helpers. My application again, I have like screens, 600 screens around 150 models, and I only have one helper with like, n functions, and this first one, this is the first line. So this make the code too easy. Anyway, so let's see some real examples. So this is how. So I told you I have like 500, 600 screens. This is how or maybe the principal screens looks like. Basically, that is the feature of my application, both against the application. And let's call it code. So if you notice, there is those five places where we have things like navigation, page header, uh, something called the filter form, stats and table. As you notice, I'm I, I'm pretty clever with names. Like I'm really like uh, finding names. And if we componentize this, we have the navigation component, page header component, the filter form component, stats component, and the table. And this is how this looks. And the code for this is like this is the whole code, of the whole page. If you see, it fits on a single line. So small, so simple that it fits on the sets. Again, and again, this is typically fixed on the same slide, but that's not the goal. The goal is to be more understandable. So let's focus in the first. Let's focus from the middle. Why from the middle? I don't So let's zoom in a bit. Let's zoom in a bit. Let's scroll down and see this component. So this is my start component. And the start component, uh, is getting accepting the seating. I will show you in a bit what this seating is. It's basically the component class itself. So the way it works is the moment when it yells the block, pass it to the seat. So we get the number. So I have this thing. I have a, so start component, what it does, just shows multiple numbers. I have the balance with amount and color, with actual amount, color, total amount, color. If you think about it, this is called the slot system. This is part of the components. And the idea there is I have a big component, which is stats, and it has the slot where I can put stuff in. And this is how the code of this component, the, the stats component, like, this is the actual code. So I just say it renders many numbers. It uses the stats number component, auto numbers. And the other thing to do here, is I have this alias. So render many numbers, whatever. The way to add a new number to the stack it is to call this with number. So what I do is I just alias it to num. So it's a lot more simpler to run. So the code here, instead of writing with number or whatever, I just write C number balance. Count out for it's a lot simple. It's a small trick I use. To be honest, the reason I did that was I didn't know that slot existed when I wrote the first version of this component and I implemented it myself. And I didn't want to change the implementation. Often I found out that often I change the implementation of internal components. So usually what I do is make my own methods that I call in the component and set it up. So in this way, when I do refactoring internal structure, I don't need to change like 200, 600. Another thing is I inherit from application component. This is my own component, but very simple to how the application controller, or the, uh, all the application with the base things. I will show it inside put there. But let's see the and this is how the stats number component HTML. We just render a TL uh, tag. We have a class and numbers is just an array. Nice new root syntax to underscore. So we did this. 
and I just add this for to Eric. You can just get random numbers. We don't need this other stuff. So to get the render numbers. And how that number component looks like? This is how the number itself is rendered. So it has a tactile amount from color and link because some of those things can be linked. Like for example, you can say how many uh, how many uh, negative transactions there are. Click and see them as filters. I have the colors. And because I just tell it, I just same thing. It's like a normal Ruby path. It just it's very obvious what this component needs. Uh, um, another trick, and this is indeed based the application. I have this helper, which was very useful. I noticed that I this a uh, I have a cache of options. So I have a cache of options, which is colors. Uh, let's say. And the colors are red, green, gray. And I accept the color. And I can just say colors fetch red, but this is going to blow up if I miss it. So what we do is I have this fetch and fallback helper. So what this thing does is the fetch, it has a fallback, and it calls this error reporting capture exception in a file. Uh, capture exception in development, in testing, it's going to blow up. Say, like, my test won't pass, my development won't work, but in production, it's just going to cap this exception. So I can go to my exception tracker and see, oh, miss this key. So the UI would look weird, like, it won't be around, which is survivable. It won't have a crash just because it's wrong color, but I'll pass it in my logs. Uh, it's very useful. Of course, I remember one time I missed, I pray with A and A. I don't know if it was word, but sometimes happens. So this is how this component looks like. And the slots are very useful, and this is how do a lot of this. Another useful component is one of my favorites. It's called the filter form. Again, very descriptive name. So you can see it sorts, it's a quote. So this is the filter form. Um, it uses something which I need filter pattern. As I mentioned, I'm very good at names. So the builder pattern is very similar to how in Rails we have the form builder. Like the thing we make form, we call those methods that build different things. So if I have this component, I have, if I have this component, which is filter, it accepts some params and it yells itself. And I have this method to choose. I have this select uh, user ID, placeholder, uh, I have this helper which is called T option. T options, what it does it is got my application for normalization, like it supports multiple languages. But it, what it does here is it gets an array and plates by some logic the how select statement. And here I have another select, I have a date range, and I have like select which has some other options. So how to get this implemented? It's a bit more complex, so I'm going to break it down. So the filter component, this is basically the source code. It has this action, so it accepts the action. Uh, so this is like the URL. Okay. It accepts the trans, and it has this array which is called input. And I haven't used slots here, because I wrote this component before I knew about slots, and honestly, we don't need to use slots to use them. So this is the initial part. There is this hack here before render. Content. So um, what's that? So before render content is needed called before we render. Why I need to call read? Why I need to call the content here? Is the block. Component, it's not being executed if content is not triggered. The moment you trigger content, then this block captures the content. And if I don't use the actual content of the block, I just use the block to kind of call my builder method, it's never called. So I just always have to render content. If you have slots, this is not needed. So um, the search. Uh, search what it does, it gets the name, label optionally, it puts the inputs, label, and it renders 
another many jobs to render another component because the search component I have this weird question mark in the beginning, so that works. Uh, the it's again normal HTML select in the view component. Just call the view helpers. So you can do everything stuck here. And again, I have two slots. I can use slots, but I wrote this before I use slots and works. So I did. So the text HTML, this is how I use the text HTML. Um, I use this helper. Notice they use a lot of T helpers. They are very similar to the, they, they basically do Rails translate helpers. But what they do, do is they say, okay, if you tap the key, if it's a blank, return it. If it's a string, render the key. If otherwise, try to translate it. Otherwise, go to like the call playful situation. So in my application, you'll notice I don't use any string anywhere except like this. It's like that, I use symbols. That's the reason when I try to translate stuff, I always check, I use the, the thing. If it's simple, try to translate. And this is how it looks like. Date range, actually the date range, instead of using some fancy calendar, it just uses two date fields and just has the much two inputs. And the whole component itself, it's basically like that. Just look list the inputs, have a label with the transaction and you have it's like a very simple form. So how it looks like, let's go up again go to the front to the page header. Page header itself, uh -huh. it uses the builder pattern again, one of my favorite patterns. Uh, it has breadcrumbs, got has header actions. The header actions is just the uh, button in the corner. And I here I have one of my other components, which is action menu. Action menu just is the menu. Again, very much. And this is how the page getter looks like. So this time, got this is like a newer component. The title itself, I use. This is my basically one of my important things. It's called translate symbol. I to translate string to translate. Otherwise, it goes to protocol kind of system where if a object has display name, display name being name of the thing, otherwise I try to go with name and title for otherwise it will go to it's very useful for translating stuff. Uh, here because I want the title of the page to be the title in the title bar of the browser, what they do here is they use the favorite content for pack, uh, pack get the page title. So you can actually use content for inside of the page. Honestly, this is good. I, I don't advise you except in this case. Um, the other stuff here is um, let's see. Uh, okay. See here, black like breadcrumbs again. Breadcrumbs just accepts an array of breadcrumbs, and what it does is it just creates like a breadcrumb. Before render is interesting. Before render, what I do in the before render. If the title was not set, so let's say I don't title. If I don't, I try to infer the title. Infer the title based on the controller name. Again, you have access and you can get the controller name. And basically, because my application is internationalized, I use the this naming convention, a page title, whatever, or whatever, to kind of have very moving all the names for my screens in a single place. And the page header itself, very simple. All the breadcrumbs, they're there. I can just render them as the array. Can do the correct title is here. And you, there is an action slot. Just render the action slot. It, page header. Then the startup, like the, the last thing, the, this big thing, which is like, again, I think the most useful, uh, the most every page, but this is the second book, the table. But whatever we do, our software just makes tables. This is my table component. Build a pattern all the way. So I have a table component which uses my search results and it and it has a record column, which is name, which is itself. I have a record which is 
apartment, which takes an apartment object, it's its display name, and it uses URL 4 kind of link to it. I have like a number, which is the documents, like the transaction, so we can generate multiple payment document. Here, I just look through it. I, I have a record to the cashier, which is of the user, columns in the cashier. I have date, I have three different money amounts. Technology here, I use a domain component transaction kind batch. The transaction because I get my columns here, and I have an action where I have button details. And button details actually is just component steps, but it's better to see. Um, and again, this is the transaction kind bad. You see it, why for uh, like main wrap up? Like, um, and button stuff is again, write this time I need to write those, but pretty much. And And this is the only component that I have things like that. And another. Uh, so, how is the table component implemented? So, this is the simplified version. The real one is uh, a lot more options, more complicated than it is in simplified. So, I have an, an array of records and columns. And I have two formats date. And I use my favorite for render. The whole component is powered by this column, and look where I get the name of a column, a list of classes that are applied to the column, a format, a format, and a block. And I have uh, this table. The other stuff is just syntactic sugar, like number is not a classic number. <laughs> money is a number, but not money. Date is time, like format, but they for matter. It's complicated. It just gets record, it's attribute, and it tries to link to, and it uses my favorite display kind of know how this record name it where it from. And this round record path just is generated based on every every on every and the table code again this slide is barely uh, it's accept like five things render the table. The header, the column, render cell, it uses a whole lot of good to show the flow and make sure it's your handle the method, the format in maybe there is render it. Again, you can go in more details, but and the table itself is just like that, like render the headers, render the cells, and if the object which is the records are respond to Current page and total pages are more than one. That means I have. And again, that's basically how the whole page is. Different. It's like very level, level by level. Again, and yeah, basically that's all. Oh, and I know again, uh, it's the end of the day, low energy stuff. Very personal. And yeah, if there's a question, all the code is here. Hey, is it your? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so we move to uh, QA Park. Do you have any questions for him? Actually, your your presentation really interesting. So thank you. Thanks. Man. No worries. Thanks for the talk. It's fantastically practical. Uh, I'm just wondering, since you've uh, been using View Component for a while, if you've also checked out other uh, similar things in the ecosystem like Flex. And whether you have any thoughts about how to find compare to each other? Uh, I mean, I like, check other things like, mo mostly in the past. In the past I haven't particularly checked. I, I check things like 
I, I used to be a fan of something called sales like 20 like years ago. It was great and it's very inspired by this. I haven't done much into the flex itself. So far, the component are well mapped the way I think. And also, I Yes, so much for your question. Uh, have any, anyone have questions? Oh, <laughs> thank you. Hi, uh, I uh, just wondering because according to the uh, example from your uh, demo, I just noticed that you define the form render method mm -hmm. in almost every uh, component, but I still confused why you need to. Yeah. All right, so if I understand the question is why do I have this uh, or render in so many places, right? Yeah. All right, so let me, oh man, I have two new sets. Uh, <laughs> all right, so okay, this one, this one, it was this form, yeah. So the, if we notice the code, this is how I'm passing this block. And this block here doesn't have, just have this form box. It doesn't have any content that actually is being rendered by itself. It's just a use this for configuration. And because this block is not code inside of the, like, let's say here, Let's say here. If here I have content, this block will get the moment the code is component. Uh, content. And when this is executed, my configuration actually works. If I don't call before render, uh, if I don't call this content anywhere in my code, I won't get my configuration and my component like input will be empty. Uh, if I put component here, go to blow up, because it's still not connected rails view context, the thing that renders them. So it needs to be called, it, content, the first time I can call it is just before the render. So before I start rendering, I call content in order for me to, to be able to trigger this build up. So I put everything in. Um, it's, it's only needed if you don't use slots. If you have one as many, you can not. It's just needed if you don't have slots and you have just if your component to just build them in. Like for example, my table component also is that because it only does configuration. Make sense? Yeah, very really, well. Thank you. Great. Thank you for the question. Anyone have we have like two minutes. We have any question about the talk? Okay. Hi. Uh, uh talking about content in here. Uh, this is possible. I use uh, another uh, component inside the content. I mean, nest it. Yes, you can nest components. Like, just let me show you. Uh, I mean, this is the point. The way. If you notice this. It's a nice sinner, uh, but this thing, so this component, transaction kind batch, inside the batch, what I do is just go render batch component. Like I have a component that renders every batch imaginable, like just takes a title and a color, and the transaction batch component, based on like the state of my domain object, renders it red or green and says info more expensive. So, can call you can call other components inside of the component. So whatever you can call in your build, basically you can call it in every component. Again, you have to be careful of like testing like uh, partial help, but usually the, the, the stuff which I see in my stuff is I have like components which are always like one of the kind of dev players. And you make components that drop. So uh so in this way, it's possible to solve the problem in the beginning of the talking about there's uh, so many picture in partial Yeah, like you can do, yeah, you can do 
component in a component in a component, <laughs> component, in a component and uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. you can do it. Uh, and it can happen. Uh, stuff makes sense. Like you can, like people can shoot themselves in the foot basically with everything, even with a fork. Uh, but the thing about the component stuff is you have a very clear input and a very clear output. Uh, and the other stuff is if you think around your component, them in your head into like, okay, this component is that you are. So this is my button. This is like the first layer, which is like the core. Second layer of components is a bit more complex, like the components, like the table components, like the four components, like they're kind of like building blocks. And the third layer is just this domain stuff, like, hey, I have transaction batch component, which is just like, usually you have like layers, but you don't need to go between them. There is nothing wrong with like 200 layers of code. The problem is when you need to go, in order to find something, you don't know which of the layers you need to go. Like for example, if I, I, if I take a batch, and the batch is not rendered properly. Uh, it can not render properly because it's blue, and the transaction expense it should be red. Okay, no, I have to cut here. Or the batch can be a square and all my badges are round, round it's small pool. Then I know I need, need to put it here. But the problem comes when you have to move pairs, when you have to move stuff layers. Like usually my problem with nesting is it's it's just because we don't want to be big long street and not because the logic is not in the back. Like you notice my page here, which is a uh, thing which started all the stuff. Okay, I'll show you again this nice scenery while I'm searching for a piece of code here. So this thing is long. Somebody would say, oh, why don't we just put this into like part and things like that? But, okay, but that's fine because if I change something on the screen, like for example, if I change some of the filter, I should have the same thing in the table. Like this implicit connection here. Like, for example, I'm searching by user ID, but if I don't show the user in the table, how would you know this function? Or uh, stats, they depend on the data here. Like, for example, if I, I mean, I don't do this right now, but now I have this nice idea, and I'll have to do it in a bit, is a talk. It, for example, if you search only for income transactions, I don't need to show you the negative stuff. I just need to show the transaction. Just more to you how needed and it's all connected so need yeah, long but yeah i mean life hopefully should be over. thank you thank you so much for your question thank you for your presentation thank you rattle again <laughs> all right thank you all for coming and see you in the after party oh yeah 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 the party talk we have a after party today the pickle office we have like a panel discussion about the path of engineer happiness in the age of AI. Uh, if you uh, will go to the party, please print this one and it, it's fine. You can go for free. Yeah. <laughs> and we have food there, so don't worry. <laughs> uh, okay. So this is the end of the first day of RubyCon Taiwan. And don't forget tomorrow you still need to go to the registration to do it. Let's scan the barcode code again. And thank you so much for being up. Thank you. Bye bye. See you tomorrow.